after 7 o'clock. Time to give a shout out and thank you to all the front lines, essential workers, to the doctors, the nurses, the longshoremen, the bus drivers, the truck drivers, the farm workers, those who work in the stores, the restaurants, the hotels, postal employees, parents, teachers. So please, if you hear my voice, would you clap your hands, honk your horns, shout, make some noise, frontline workers. Hey, Shaquille, what's up? What's up? How you doing up here? How's it going? All right, so, yep, I'm out here on my balcony. This is my grape plant, waiting for these grapes to grow. I'm just waiting on these grapes to grow. Got these little buds right here. They ain't hardly ready. But, yeah. This is my little garden up here on my balcony. My two peach trees. Hey, Teresa, what's up? Skill, I'm proud of you, nephew. You keep on working. You keep on doing that. Oh. Don't let me go inside. Teresa, you need those planters? <laughs> uh, you say you need those planters, huh? Okay. Uh, so today's my last day doing after 7 o'clock. I'm going to start doing 6 o'clock as of tomorrow. But anyway, here we go. What's up, Facebook? Today is day 400. And 16, that means since April 1st, 2020, I've been doing a shout out. So this is the 416th day of doing a shout out, saying thank you to the frontline and sense of workers. And right here, April last of 2020, last year. On the global, it was 263,000 had died from coronavirus in April of 2020. And in the United States, it was 73,039. Yesterday, May 20th, it was 3,446,569 throughout the world, 602,616 here in the United States. And today, May 21st, 2021, we now have 3,459,308 throughout the world. And right here in the United States, 603,408. Hey, Shaquille, you say, <laughs> Uncle's looking young. <laughs> I don't feel young, nephew. I'm 72 years old. I feel old. But thank you. I appreciate you saying that, nephew. So, uh, oh, starting tomorrow, May 22nd, I will start doing this shout out early between 6 and 6.30. So I won't be doing the, it's after 7 o'clock. It will be, um, it will, you know, be, Starting at 6 o'clock. So, hey, <clears throat> let's do the birthdays. So, today, May 21st, 2021, I want to say happy birthday to Nafisa Bethione. Nafisa, happy birthday. And also, happy birthday to Laverne Sneed Branch. Happy birthday, Laverne. And Anna... Nikitaras, Nikitaras, happy birthday. 
to all you young ladies out there whose birthday today, Nafisa, Laverne, and Anna, happy, happy birthday. And to anybody else who was born on May 21st, happy birthday to all of you. Okay, so my prayers and thoughts. We go to prayers and thoughts. My prayers and thoughts. Asking everybody to keep in your prayers, in your thoughts, all those who have died from coronavirus, all the victims of COVID-19, okay? And then I want to ask, you know what? Keep them in your prayers and thoughts. I'm going to go, I'm going to switch over to world and local news. And then after that, I'm going to come back to prayers and thoughts, okay? On the world and local news, you remember Ted Cruz, right? Ted Cruz, governor of Texas. Ted Cruz, they were calling him Cancun, Cancun Cruz because Cancun Cruz decided right in the middle of, was it a snowstorm where everything froze over in Texas? And he decided to go to Cancun right in the middle of uh all kind of bad stuff happening in Texas. So they was calling him Cancun Cruz. Well, now he has a new nickname. They're going to call him Kremlin Cruz. That's right, Kremlin Cruz. Oh, Ted sat up here and decided that he was looking. He posted Russian propaganda of their military, their military propaganda. They're showing, um, you know, how they were recruiting people to join the Russian military. So what Cruz did was he came up with something that showed a young lady who um, she has two mothers, you know, um, she has two mothers. They're, they're, what would that be, like they're in a lesbian marriage. And so they were talking about how she had two mothers and they showed her joining the army and everything. So he was basically trying to make fun of, he's trying to make fun of the transgender and the L- LBGT community by sitting up there comparing LGBT army recruit to the Russian Russian propaganda, military propaganda. So, Ed Nash, what's up with you, bro? Anyway, no more Cancun Cruise. Now we can call him Kremlin Cruise because that's what he was doing. San Francisco, California. In San Francisco... Over in Hayes Valley, over in the Hayes Valley, an 86-year-old Asian woman was attacked by a racist. And she was screaming, and bystanders, instead of just standing there watching, bystanders got involved. Construction workers, a man dropping off his his, uh, kid at school, other people ran over there and stopped the racist attack on an 86-year-old Asian woman. And then they followed him, cornered him, and kept him kept him there until the police arrived and arrested him. The man that was arrested was 40 years old. 40 years old attacking an Asian woman who was twice his age. So um, shout out. Shout out to the bystanders that got involved and took action. Shout out and thank you. Georgia, Republican Andrew Clyde, the Republican... Georgia, a Republican representative from the state of Georgia. You got to look on YouTube to see what a fool this person is. Andrew Clyde. This idiot sat up here and said that the insurrection, first he said it wasn't an insurrection. He said it wasn't an insurrection. These were tourists because they stay within the they stay within the 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 ropes. They were walking in an orderly fashion inside the building. They weren't insurrectionists. They were walking in the building, looking like tourists, and that's what he called them. He said they were on a tourist trip. Okay, so if he felt that they was a tourist, answer me this. 
why would this punk ass Andrew Clyde, if he thought they were <laughs> these rioters, insurrect, and he said he wouldn't call them insurrectionists, he said they were tourists. If he really thought they were tourists, why they have a picture of this punk sitting up here helping barricade the house chamber door because they were afraid these tourists was going to come inside the house chamber. Right. Tourists. And you got to help barricade the chamber door, you punk. If you're going to sit up here and be, well, all you was was tourists, you should have been like, hey, we don't need to barricade the door. They're just here to see us in action, you little punk. That's what he was. Because if you're going to barricade the door, then obviously you're scared. And if you're scared, then just say you were scared. But now you want to change your tune and you want to sit up here and all of a sudden they're not a riot. They're not, it's not a riot. They're just on a tourist trip. Punk it. Republican. I spell Republican with a K. Not three Ks, not KKK, but with one K. I'm not going to call them all Ks. I'm not going to say all three Ks. I'm just going to say one K. Republican. Okay. All right. On the world news. So, the ceasefire is still in effect. Still in effect. There between the Israelis and Hamas. Still in effect. You know, 11 days, they've been fighting for 11 days. And all this got started was at the Al-Aqsa Mosque. The Al-Aqsa Mosque in East Jeru in Jerusalem, that is the third most holy, sacred shrine for Muslims, for Islam. It's also the Sermon Mount, which is sacred for Jews. And Jerusalem is also sacred for Christians. So all three religions, Islam, Christianity, and Judaism, all, you know, consider Jerusalem sacred. Now, I'm going to say this again. Netanyahu, the prime minister of Israel, was, is... Kind of like Donald Trump out here, but in Israel. That's why him and Donald was so tight with each other. They was really tight. So the problem was Netanyahu was on the verge of getting, you know, they was, they was trying to get rid of him. So he had to think of something to keep his power. And I said it again, I'll, I said it before and I'll say it again. He basically had this whole thing go down where the Israeli police and the Israeli military started forcing the Muslims out of Al-Aqsa Mosque, and that's what started all the fighting, okay? And what better way for Netanyahu to keep his power and to have all the Israelis, those who were in opposition to him, end up having to be on his side because of what was going on. So... That's what they're doing. Ceasefire is still in effect. Thousands of Palestinians are homeless because so many bombs, the so many Israeli jets drop bombs all over where, you know, thousands of uh, Palestinians, Muslims are homeless right now. Over 200 uh, Palestinians are dead, and I believe 15 Israelis are dead right now. So we're gonna see what happens. Hope, hope that, <clears throat> hope, pray that the the ceasefire will stay in effect. Now I want to go back to prayers and thoughts. Prayers and thoughts for everyone who was killed by criminals, thugs, the police, drug dealers, the KKK, the Nazis, the white supremacists. The gangbangers, the racists, the government troops, the rebels, those who died from suicide, and those who died because they were in the wrong place at the wrong time, 
because somebody was drunk, somebody was high, somebody was doing something stupid like joyriding and following a fire truck and, you know, maybe killing an innocent person. So, you know, all those who have died for any of those things, you know, ask you to keep them in your prayers and thoughts. Now, I want to say to you and ask you to remember Ronald Green. We all know Breonna Taylor. We all know George Floyd. We all know Ahmaud Arbery and countless other people. But we're just now learning about Ronald Green. Ronald Green died May 10th, 2019. That's two years ago. But they're just now coming out with all this stuff that's going on. So I want to show you right here. Bear with me. And dragged before he died. Tonight, new body camera video is coming to light, as well as an official autopsy report. Here's ABC's chief justice correspondent, Pierre Thomas, with the latest. Tonight, new police body cam footage obtained by ABC News, raising questions about whether Ronald Green's breathing may have been compromised in this violent encounter with Louisiana State Troopers. In the 30-minute video, Ronald Green desperately tries to roll over, but is ordered to stay on his stomach. Don't you turn over, all right? Don't you turn over. You lay, lay on your belly. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, sir. Let's Troopers initially said that Green died of injuries sustained in a car crash. But the mounting video evidence from the body camera show them aggressively beating and tasing Green. I am sorry. Police are discouraged from leaving handcuffed suspects in a prone position, especially if they aren't resisting, because it can greatly hinder their breathing. That point was made repeatedly during the recent trial of a former Minneapolis police officer convicted of murdering George Floyd. ABC News also obtaining an autopsy report revealing that Green had a broken breastbone and torn aorta. It also cites head injuries and the way Green was restrained as potential factors in his 2019 death. And it also shows Green had high levels of cocaine and alcohol in his system. And for more now, we bring in Pierre Thomas. Pierre, ABC News has obtained more of that video and the autopsy report, but are there other official records that could shed light on how Green died? Possibly. We just heard from the state police in a press conference, and they say that they plan to release all the video. So there may yet be more video where we get to see more of what happened. And Juju, here's the thing about this case. It's been two years since it happened, and the family has been demanding transparency, wanting to know more. And the question is, why did it take so long? And that video is hard to watch, Pierre. And as you've reported, the U.S. Justice Department is now looking into the case. Do we know anything about the timing of their investigation or how far along it is? We have no word on that. These typically can involve months of investigation, weeks of investigation, because what they want to do is examine all the evidence, the video. They also want to do interviews. They're trying to find out intent that's difficult to do in some cases. Well, Pierre Thomas, we know you'll stay on it. Thank you. And switching gears now to the coronavirus in... Yeah, that's... Say his name. Say his name, Ronald Green. And when I first saw this, when the police brought him in to the emergency room, they told the emergency room doctor Ronald Green had died on impact in a car accident. And when that doctor sat up here and examined Ronald Green, he found taser prongs embedded in his body. They have pictures that they didn't show on this on this particular video, but they have pictures where his head was bashed in. And he had bruises all over his body and all over his face. They have video where the cops are talking about I got all his blood on me. I hope he don't have effing AIDS. They showed a picture of the car. Now, you know, if you've seen a picture of a car where somebody dies in a car accident, the car is totally mangled up. Totally. Beyond repair. This car just looked like it just hit a tree. Not even bad. 
and no airbags, nothing. They showed the cop handcuffed Ronald Green behind his back, forcing him to lay on the concrete. The cop had his knee on his neck, on his back. Then they hogtied him. Hogtied his feet. While he was still on the concrete, face down, they dragged him. And then they try to they try to sit up here and play it off. This was two years ago. Why did it take two years? Because you remember George Floyd? Their initial report on George Floyd was totally different from every from what the trial showed. And if it hadn't been for that young teenage girl who had the courage to stand there and videotape what happened. Derek Chauvin never would have been convicted of doo-doo. Louisiana State Police, they thought they was getting away with it. There was three cops. We saw three white cops. One of those cops got fired. The day that he got fired, he went out and he got killed in a car accident. Now, did he commit suicide by he ran his car into a tree? I don't know. Am I going to tell you that I'm happy that he died. I'm not going to say that, not on camera, but you can look at me and tell, tell what I think, but you know, I'm not going to say it. The other two cops, they were put on suspension. One of the cops was suspended for turning off his camera and dragging the suspect who was Ronald Green. And guess what he got? 50. 50 days suspension? No. 50 hours. Two days and two hours. That's how much a man's life is worth. And then the Louisiana State Police had the nerve to sit up here and say that information was not supposed to have been put out because they're in the middle of an investigation, two-year investigation. So I want you to say his name, Ronald Green. Say his name, Ronald Green. So whenever I say Breonna Taylor, whenever I say George Floyd, whenever I say Ahmaud Arbery, Emmett Till, Oscar Grant, Trayvon Martin, you know, Elijah McClain, whenever I say anybody's name, I will make sure I say Ronald Green too. And I'm going to keep on talking about Ronald Green. Because this happened two years ago. And if it hadn't been for what happened to George Floyd, none of this would have came out at all. All right, y'all. I'm up out of here. Um, don't forget, I'll be coming back starting 6 o'clock tomorrow. My grandbaby's birthday is tomorrow. Well, no. her My grandbaby's birthday was actually on Malcolm X's birthday, May 19th. But her birthday party is tomorrow. And I'm going to be at the birthday party up in Sac. Okay, so, um, hey y'all, peace, one love. Mabuhay, Ashe, Harambe, Amanla, Hokahe, Mahalo, Shalom, Namaste, Assalamu alaikum, wa alaikum assalam, Wakanda forever, Jayu, Que Viva, all that good stuff. Hey y'all, I'm up out of here, all right? Hey Teresa. Take care. Thank you for coming on here, Ed, Shaquille, all of y'all. Thank you. Peace, one love. I'm out.